There are times when a product comes into my studio and it just absolutely floors me with the performance. I have been waiting to get my hands on this lens since it was announced. I'm actually using it right now on the Z9 and I'm shooting at 1.2 and I'm not gonna do the entire video this way because I don't think you wanna see this much bokeh. But this lens is a very, very special lens. The way that it renders, the way how sharp it is, how quick the autofocusing is, but the bokeh, the depth of field, the, the separation from your sever to the background. This is going to be a defining moment for Nikon going forward in the Z mount when people try this lens and see how it performs. The image quality, the sharpness, the minimal to zero chromatic aberration, the bokeh, the character to this lens, but at the same time, the autofocusing speed. If you thought the Z9 was already fast, wait till you see how quick it is with this 85 1.2. It is lightning quick. As a matter of fact, when I compare it to other Nikkor lenses that I have, 51.2, 24-70 f2.8, it's faster than those. Even the bird agrees behind me. I had to pay for him. Now, he's, now he stops. I didn't pay him that much. But now let's go into Lightroom. Let's pixel peep. And I'm also going to show you comparisons against the 51.2 and the 105 1.4 in terms of autofocusing speed. Let's get down to it. So let's take a look at the first photo here of my Rottweiler Praha, all taken with the 85 1.2 and the Nikon Z9, by the way. And as we look here, the focus is right on this eye and it is absolutely tacked sharp. Look how little of a focus area that you have here, but when you nail it, you nail it. And this does lock onto the eye relatively well. And having a Rottweiler with black fur and dark eyes is a challenge for a lot of camera systems. And it did lock on predominantly most of the time. Had some you know issues here and there, but again, that's with any camera, Sony, Canon, Nikon, Fujifilm, doesn't matter. It's always tougher photographing dogs with black hair and dark eyes but it does a great job and just look how sharp this is. It is breathtakingly beautiful. You can see right underneath the eye, the detail right there. This is awesome to check out and also the fall off, how beautiful that is. Next, let's look at Tony Stark here. Now this is through a piece of glass. I was walking through a uh, storefront and I saw this and I said, let's try the eye tracking. But as we can see here, locked onto the eyes rel relatively well. Again, shooting through glass, so it's not going to be as sharp as the previous image that we saw, but I'm actually looking more at chromatic aberration or any, or any sort of fringing, and I'm not seeing that whatsoever. It is really well controlled. And here's another photo looking at his mask, focused on this, the detail, no fringing that I see here. Again, really well controlled, and the fall off is absolutely beautiful. Batman here, since we're on the comic book or the you know superhero theme, and this is a statue that I have in my home and I use this most of the time to try tracking eyes because of course we've got these little white eyes here with the cow, the face, and it does a tremendous job. Again, you're gonna see the fall off. This is all at 1.2 by the way, because look, you can stop down with this lens and it performs beautifully stopped down, but you're paying the price and you're buying this big of a lens because of the 1.2 aperture. Otherwise get the 85 1.8 and save yourself, you know, quite a bit of money. But this is spot on tack sharp, beautiful fall off. This is impressive. Now this was taken once again at 1.2 because I'm taking all these images for 1.2 because we're going to be talking about that. And here's without edits. So you're going to solve the after edit. And now here's the before. We're going to zoom in on the grill here to see if we're seeing any sort of green or purple fringing. And it is very well controlled. You might see a little bit here with the light as this was the lights were turned on on the car. I wanted that effect going through this plastic here. But overall, looking at the even at the bottom grill area here where the chrome is at it's it's fantastic it's really well controlled the sharpness on this look at the tire right there you see all the detail in the writing it is really really nice so let's look at this bicycle that i also took a photo of here as well and we have carbon fiber uh inlay in this and you can see the detail coming through this even on the carbon fiber on the wheel here this is beautiful the detail that is showing up is awesome even looking at the chain here, we want to go close up on it to see if there's any sort of fringing and very minimal, just a hair. But I got to zoom in so much. I mean, this is, I would arguably say this is even better than the 51.2 that I'm seeing coming out of uh, Sony. And that's a fantastic lens, the GM lens. This is even more well controlled. I mean, Nikon's been really good at this, even with their 51.2 S-line lens, it's really well controlled. And this uh, follows that in spades. It's just awesome. And look at the depth of field on this. Beautiful blows out the background great for product photography especially if you're doing motorcycles cars 
bicycles where you don't want to have any sort of distraction behind it, this is going to be a great lens for that. Let's take a look at this little girl right here. And we're just going to see where it focuses right there on the eye, the eyelashes right there. We got onto her right eye, the left eye's out of focus, the hand right here, the nose is kind of getting out of focus here. So you have a very small area to nail focus with. And most times than not, this camera and lens lock on focus where you want it to lock on and it sticks on like glue. And this is just another prime example. And here's another prime example of 1.2. And just to give you an idea of just how, your, how small of an area you have that is sharp and in focus right here. And we want to zoom in on this. We see the wax dripping off this candlestick here. The detail, beautiful. And it handles flames beautifully on that. Really well controlled. Last but not least, bokeh balls, because I know a lot of you are very interested in that. This image isn't the best one for it. This if locked on focus on this pull and not on his face, but we're looking at the bokeh balls here. Now, they're not perfectly circular. They're a little bit more of an oblong shape, but I don't mind that personally. It's kind of a bit of a larger cat eye shape and it's even right here in the center of the frame because this adds a little bit of character. If it's perfectly circular, some people like that, that's fine. Sometimes I do as well, especially for certain types of photography. But if I want some character, I want something a little bit different, I like interesting shapes in the background and this lens performs that. But one thing I did notice is there's no sort of onion ring going around the bokeh balls, all well controlled once again, no green fringing happening there. So hats off to Nikon for doing a great job with that. Now let's look at the autofocusing. Now the 2470 f2.8 does a relatively good job. It's pretty fast, I have to say. This is my go-to lens for a lot of the video that I do here on this channel, and it works relatively well. But I will give the advantage to the 8512 even over the 51.2. Now that's ever so slight, but the 8512 is just so fast how it locks on and sticks on. And something that just stood out to me from the very first time I mounted that lens on the Z9, I was impressed by how fast it was. The 105 1.4, again, this is an adapted F-mount lens to the Z-mount, so it's not going to be as fast, but to give the lens and the FTZ2 adapter some credit here, and the Z9 it does a decent job, but comparing it to the newer lenses, of course, it's gonna fall behind, but it's not a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination. As we saw from the images, and of course, the comparisons against the 51.2 and the 105 1.4, it's safe to say that this is the crown jewel of Nikon's lineup in terms of lenses right now. Everybody's been waiting for this 85 for a long time. And people thought it was gonna be an 85 1.4, then the rumors came out that it was gonna be an 85 1.2. And of course, with the 51.2, it just makes sense, and they delivered. Now, this lens is heavy, coming at 1,160 grams, and it is bulbous on the Z9. There's no getting around that, okay? This is a big lens. This is not gonna be a lens that's gonna be inconspicuous if you wanna do street photography. All right, it's probably gonna live in a studio or it's only gonna be brought out when you need this focal range and this depth of field. The 51.2 might be a better everyday lens, but I've been using this lens predominantly since I got it. And I gotta say, I've really enjoyed it. I just love how it renders the subject, how it blows out the background and how quick the autofocusing is. And I don't know what Nikon's plans are going forward with other lenses coming into play. I mean, they have a 35 that they still have to bring out and hopefully it'll be a 35 1.2. But if it has these autofocusing motors that this lens has, and it has this type of image quality, which I don't see them doing anything less, Nikon could be one of the go-to mirrorless camera systems of 2023. Now we know it's an exciting year for cameras. We don't know what's coming out. Rumor has it there's going to be a Z8 or other things. We don't know. But this 85 1.2, to me, if you can get over the size and the weights, is going to be a lens that you're probably going to have in your bag and you're going to shoot with it a lot more than you think you will because it is that good. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on the 85 1.2. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. It does help me out quite a bit. And with that, guys, take care, stay safe, and I'll chat to you soon.